Hey guys, Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to another virtual lecture. In today's video, we're going to continue our lecture on fiscal policy with automatic fiscal policy, also known as built-in stabilizer. Okay, recall this breakdown that I gave you earlier when we first started this topic, yeah? Okay, so there are generally two categories or two types of fiscal policy, which are the discretionary fiscal policy, which includes both the expansionary fiscal policy and contraction fiscal policy, okay? And um, the second type is the non-discretionary fiscal policy or the automatic stabilizer. So a very quick recap, discretionary fiscal policy is basically when the government deliberately changes the tools of fiscal policy, which are government spending, or G, and taxation, or T, uh, in order to respond to the economic conditions. Okay, so when there's a recession or high unemployment, an expansionary fiscal policy is adopted. Whereas if there's high inflation, a contractionary fiscal policy is adopted. Okay, so bear in mind, for both of these expansionary and contractionary fiscal policy, the government will be the one who's adjusting, okay, or deliberately changing the tools. Okay, so today we're going to look at automatic stabilizers. From the word automatic here, okay, you can guess that the changes happen quite automatically based on the different tax systems. Okay, so now let's take a look at what it means by an automatic fiscal policy or a built-in stabilizer. A built-in stabilizer is anything that increases government's budget deficit or reduces its budget surplus during a recession and increases its budget surplus or reduces its budget deficit during an expansion without requiring explicit action by policymakers. So this is what it means by the system working automatically without requiring intervention by the policymakers or government. And as always, there are assumptions to be made to understand this concept better. Okay, so the first assumption is we assume that government spending is fixed and independent of the GDP level. Okay, so what that means is, if you look at this diagram, the G schedule is a straight line. Okay, and secondly, we also assume that tax rates vary directly with GDP. So as you can see here, the tax line is upward sloping. Yes, we've seen this diagram before uh, when we studied leakage and injection approach, right? Okay, so it's basically the same. Here is our injection, but here we are only focusing on the G, whereas this line here is our leakage, and we are only focusing on the T. Okay, so let's try to understand um, how this built-in stabilizer work, okay? So let's start at our initial point. So let's say we are at this point, GDP2, okay? So at GDP2, you can see here we're experiencing a balanced budget because the amount of G is exactly the same as the amount of T, right? At this point, okay? So now let's say um, recession happens, okay? So you know what happens, right, during recession? When there's a recession, um, there will be a fall in spending, okay, uh, in the economy overall, okay? So when there's a fall in spending, what happens is the GDP will fall. So that means GDP 2 will fall to GDP 1, okay? So this is what happens when there's a recession. Of course, it can go beyond GDP 1, okay? So it's, we're basically going this way to the left. Now, so what happens when there's a recession? What happens when GDP falls? Okay, so we know that when GDP falls, in other words, income levels fall as well, right? So what happens is when income level falls, tax revenues will also automatically fall, right? Here, as you can see, because taxes has this positive relationship with income, right? So when income falls, so GDP falls, tax rates are also Falling. So this is what it means when we have a recession, falling income, falling GDP, tax revenues also automatically fall. So as you can see here at GDP 1, the amount of G or government spending is more than the amount of T. Therefore, we have a deficit. Okay, so this is what it means. All right, so how will this solve the problem? The thing is, with lower tax, Remember when we studied the relationship between taxes, income, consumption, and saving? With lower tax here, okay, it will somehow prompt and encourage more spending, right? So it will basically soften the force of this economic contraction. Okay, so with lower income, it will encourage people to spend more, thereby improving the GDP, and we may be able to get back to the original GDP too.
Now let's take a look at the opposite situation, okay? Say again, we start off at the initial condition, GDP 2. Say the economy is experiencing an inflation. Okay, so when there's inflation, there'll be more spending, higher spending. So there'll be more income, more spending, more output. Therefore, the GDP 2 will move out towards the right to GDP 3 and onwards, of course. Okay, so let's say we're moving this way. So here we have an inflation. So what happens when we have an inflation? There's more output, right? And therefore, at the same time, when there's more income, tax revenues here will automatically rise, right? So you can see at GDP 3, the amount of government spending is lesser than the tax revenue. So since G is less than T, we have a budget surplus. Okay, so how will this solve the problem? Okay, with higher taxes, it will reduce spending, right? Because when there's higher taxes, there will be lesser disposable income. Lesser disposable income will lead to lesser consumption and spending. So basically, when this happens, okay, when surplus happens, it will restrain further inflation from happening. Okay, so hopefully you can see this is how the automatic stabilizer works. When the economy experiences either a recession or an inflation, okay, the tax system basically automatically remedies the situation through budget deficit or budget surplus. All right, guys, so now let's try to learn on how well does the automatic stabilizer work, okay? So in other words, um, how fast or how slow will the economy's built-in stabilizer uh, react when there's a problem, when there's a recession or an inflation? Okay, so here let's start with some basic sketching of our leakage and injection model. Okay, oops, okay, so here as usual, here's our real GDP or output. Okay, let's shift it a bit here to the right. Okay, and here's basically our GNT because that's what the tools that we're focusing on. Okay, so based on our first assumption, Government spending is independent of real GDP, right? Therefore, the government schedule is a straight line. And we also assume that taxes are positively uh, related to income and output income, basically. So here's T. Okay, so this is basically the balance budget point where G equals to T. It's here. Okay, so here's our equilibrium GDP. Okay, right, so as... Um, you've learned before, you can see that when the GDP, uh, when there's a fall in GDP, we have a recession, right? So when it goes this way to the left, we basically have a recession. So here is a recession. Okay. If GDP uh, moves to the right, this way we have an inflation. So here is an inflation. So we've learned just now, whenever there's a recession, what happens is automatically there will be a deficit, right? And when there's an inflation, automatically there will be a surplus. Okay, let me just, all right. So we can, as you can see, this area here basically is the one that's um, making the economy better, okay? So this area here is the surplus. This area here is the deficit. Okay, let me just write it down. This is the deficit. Okay, very beautiful handwriting. Here's a surplus. Okay, now, so sometimes you'll be asked, or if you wonder, what is the size of the automatic or built-in stabilizer, okay? So it basically depends on our tax system, okay? So there are generally three tax systems. One is called the progressive tax system. What that means is the tax or the average tax rate increases with the level of GDP, okay? And we also have the proportional um, tax system where the average tax rate remains the same regardless of the level of GDP and of course the third one is we have a regressive uh, tax system whereby the average tax rate decreases with the level of GDP. Now don't make the mistake of thinking that uh, you know the line will be downward sloping or whatnot. No, the tax line will always be upward sloping okay because that's the relationship Okay, taxes will always be upward sloping. It has a positive relationship with income. It will always be here. So how can we differentiate whether it's a progressive or regressive? It's the slope of the tax line. Okay, here let's say this is the proportional, okay? The original. This is proportional. So if we say that a tax rate is more progressive, what it means is it's steeper. 
Okay, let me just sketch this. So here we have a steeper. Okay, let's start here. If you have a ruler, it'll be better, okay, guys? Here, yeah. So this is a more progressive. Can you see? Okay, sorry, this one here. This is a more progressive um, text line. As you can see, it's steeper than before, right? So what's the implication here? If you can see, when we have a recession, our deficit will be bigger. You have an extra extra deficit here guys and here if we have an inflation we will have an extra area of surplus so can you see that if the tax system is more progressive our deficit and our surplus area would be bigger so if the area is bigger what it means is it's just faster for the economy to go back to equilibrium okay so alternatively Let's look at a regressive tax system. Regressive meaning that the average tax rate decreases yeah, with the level of GDP. What it means is the tax line would be a bit uh, flatter compared to the original just now. So originally it was here, T. Okay, so now let's draw a flatter. There you go. Okay, so this is a more regressive. Regressive tax line, as you can see, it's flatter. So when we have a recession, you can see that the area or the deficit is smaller. It's very small compared to the previous two systems. Whereas when we have an inflation, again, the surplus area is also smaller. Okay? Right? So basically, the size of the automatic stabilizer will actually affect how fast or how slow the economy returns back to normal with this automatic stabilizer. Okay? So just to recap, the size of the automatic stabilizer, okay, whether it's a progressive tax system, proportional tax system, or regressive tax system, depends on the slope of the tax line, okay?